Hey everybody, welcome to Buratech. In this episode, we're going to be asking the question, is Construct 3 the best game engine ever created? All right, so my name is John Burra, and I've been coding since 1997. In fact, my first coding course was making games in a language called Pascal at my local university. This is my first foray into learning programming, and the next year I started to learn Visual Basic and C++ as well. I was hooked. Back in the 90s, it was really difficult to make a game. It wasn't until the 2000s when you got a program like Game Maker that made things a lot easier. But even then, you couldn't really export your game or make anything really useful with Game Maker. Game Maker today is a different story, but in the past, it well, wasn't as good. Even 10 or 11 years ago, Unity was in its infancy and other engines just simply weren't as good. So game engines have come a long way, so it begs the question, which is the best one? Now it's kind of a loaded question because oftentimes when it comes to which is the best engine, it comes down to personal preference. But I've been using Construct 2 and Construct 3 for years and I absolutely love it. But before that, I've tried so many engines and I've always come back to Construct 3. I try Unity for a bit and Unity is a great engine, I absolutely love it. I try Unreal, I try other engines and I always come back. So what makes me come back to Construct 3? Well, it's extremely easy to make games in. And I've been making games for so long that when I say that it is really easy, it is so incredibly easy. My first published game was for the Xbox 360. It was a game called Circa, which you can see some footage here. And I made that game from scratch. And I made it in C Sharp using X and A at the time. And it was actually fairly difficult. In fact, it was so difficult sometimes that I would make my game on my PC and then port it to the Xbox. And because the Xbox uses a different framework, the game would completely crash or have 120 errors. I remember one time I was focusing on the errors. I was 50 errors, then 40 errors. And it was just, the errors were going down, down, and down. I said, okay, I'm gonna port it to the Xbox and then I'm going to go for lunch after that. So I poured it to the Xbox and there was something like 120 errors and I, when I went for lunch anyway, I was so fed up. So making games in the past was really difficult and this was you know, not even 10 years ago where I had all these issues. Now today with Unity and Unreal and all these other engines, it's a lot easier. One of the things about Construct 3 that I love is that it's so easy. If I wanted to make a simple space shooter, it would take me far less time in Construct 3 than literally any other engine out there. And the reason is that it is a non-coding engine. So when I first started my company, Mammoth Interactive, a lot of people didn't like the non-coding aspect. Before Construct, I was using an engine called Game Salad. Now Game Salad was a non-coding engine to make iOS games, and I made something like 30 iOS games using Game Salad. But when Construct 3 came out, everything was easier. It was so much easier. In fact, there's other game engines out there like Stencil that also use this technique. Now I'm not saying that Game Salad or Stencil are bad engines, in fact, they're actually pretty good. I just prefer Construct 3. The workflow in Construct is easy to understand and is fairly intuitive. The whole program itself is extremely intuitive. When it comes to making software, not just games, but software in general, I always try to find the path of least resistance. Software development is so hard that you don't need any external factors to make it more difficult. It's already hard enough. So when you have a game engine that's giving you a bunch of errors or things are really difficult, then perhaps that game engine is too difficult for you as a programmer. Now, a lot of these game engines are very complex and to make a game work, it's extremely complex and there's a lot of things that are happening in the back end. So naturally there's gonna be some issues. But at the same time, you should get your idea out as fast as you can. Because remember, your idea is completely useless if it's sitting on your hard drive or on the cloud. You want your game to be played and enjoyed by as many people as possible. After Game Salad, when Construct 2 came out, you still had to download it onto your computer and it was only available for the PC. I, at the time, had a PC and a Mac for different development and I loved Construct so much that I really wish there was a Mac version. Construct 2 was a downloadable PC product, but Construct 3 is available to be used in the browser. And this is incredible. You can build a game, you can build iOS games, you can build Android games in the browser. It's insane. You literally just open up Chrome, go to editor.construct.net, and you're there. That's it, no installation necessary. It's so incredibly awesome. In fact, I've made several games with Construct that I've made in my browser. Now this might not seem that important, but you know what? You can actually do this on a Chromebook, you can do this on a Mac, and you can do this on a PC. You can do it anywhere where Chrome is really available. And on top of that, you can save all of your games to the cloud. And I love doing this. I, whenever I make a game, I always download it to my computer and then I upload it to the cloud. In fact, there's different places and different uh, clouds that you can upload them to. I love upload them to them all. Because when I'm at home, I use a different computer than when I'm at work. And having everything just be able to work within Chrome is amazing. Now this is of course a bigger, more philosophical question with development. Should everything be done on the web or should we be using native code? And we're gonna be talking about that in another episode. 
But for now, let's take a look at some of the other features that I absolutely love about Construct. One of the criticisms over the years is that Construct is not that versatile and making really big games is very challenging in it. Now, I would say that if you're making a really big game in Construct, maybe perhaps Construct's not the best engine for you. If you're gonna make a really big game with lots of multiplayer, I would use something else. I would probably use Unity or Unreal. But for the most part, I would say that maybe one to 2% of games can't even be made in Construct. Now, Construct is a 2D engine, so if you wanna make a 3D game, you're gonna have to use something else. And we'll talk more about that later. I've been rarely hindered by the tool set that Construct offers. Construct is so intuitive and whatever tools that they allow you to use, you can pretty much do anything you want with them. It's rare that I say to myself, I wish this could be done and it just simply can't be done. Now, sometimes in Construct, there are things that are really easy to do and then there are things that are a little more challenging to do. Now, the functionality Construct might mean that you, what you need to do is a little bit more complicated and needs some extra code. And this is true for literally every kind of game engine. Now, because Construct's so easy, a lot of people think that if you can't do something immediately, then it can't be done at all. Well, this is really far from the truth. In fact, I've fallen in this boat myself where I've had a problem and I just had to take a little extra time to solve it with some less intuitive way. It doesn't mean I couldn't do it. It just was harder to do. And I say this after years and years of coding that making a game and prototyping it is really easy and really good. I can't stress how easy Construct 3 is. When it comes to designing your game graphically, it, Construct 3 has a built-in pixel editor and it's quite awesome actually. In fact, Construct 3's pixel editor is almost as good as some other commercial editors out there. It needs a little bit of work to be the best pixel editor out there, but you can still do any kind of pixel art within your game. And you can do it within your browser as well. If you want to pull in your own art from like Adobe Illustrator, you can just drop it in. It's pretty easy. So how is the community and are there lots of examples of code? Well, one of the best things about Construct 2 and Construct 3 is that a lot of the code is very similar. Now, Construct 3 is a much better engine than Construct 2, but at the same time, a lot of the examples, if you need to find out how to do something or simply Google them, they're usually in Construct 2 and they usually work. I rarely find an example or, or a tutorial that is completely obsolete and this is really good if you follow any other languages sometimes going between 2.9 and 3.0 there's a huge difference well with construct 2 and construct 3 at least the code base in there is not that different now of course there are differences but construct 3 usually does a better job of it. now one of the things i love about construct 3 is that they release a new version every week. They have a, a release version, which is a stable version, uh, which means that there are few, if any, bugs in. And they also have a beta version, so you can try the newest widgets before they go into the stable version. I love getting these emails in my inbox because it shows that the team is really dedicated. And it's a very small team that's making Construct 3. But I've talked to the founders many times and they're very committed to development. In fact, the development that they do is very paramount to what these other multi-million dollar companies get. So what happens if you need to do something and there is absolutely no way to do it in the Construct Editor? Well, you can make your own plugins and behaviors. In fact, there's a development kit out there that will allow you to do this, which means that there's pretty much no limit to what you can do. Now, if there's one feature that I love the most about Construct is the mobile preview feature. This is amazing. So first of all, if you've ever developed for mobile devices, you'll often have to pull up a simulator and even getting that simulator to work is extremely challenging. Now, why would you want to test on your mobile device? Well, sometimes when you get something that works on your mobile device, it might not work in other areas. So you can be making your game on your computer and as soon as you test it out, on your device, something happens. In fact, one of the biggest faux pas that I had when I was first developing is that there was a bug in the system and there was no music on the device. So I heard the music on the computer, but as soon as I released it, there was no music because I didn't test it on the phone. I just assumed that what was on the computer actually was gonna be on the phone. Big mistake, don't do that. So you always have to test on the device. How does Construct deal with this? Does it deal with simulators or any kind of extraneous functionality? Basically, you take a picture of a QR code and it instantly pops up on your phone. It's so incredibly awesome. After years and years of being an app developer, this is the most elegant and minimal solution I have seen that makes testing on a device 
easy. Furthermore, if you have a ton of different devices, like this is an iPhone and you have a bunch of tablets, it's really simple. If you were to do this in, let's say, Xcode or Android Studio, it would take you almost 10 times the amount of time to do it. And in Construct, things are just easy. I've used Construct 3 a lot. I've made a ton of commercial games with Construct 3, but there's a few things that I would really like to see. Now, the founders have been clear on this issue, and I agree with the founders on this. However, the problem is not necessarily with Construct, but with the world around it. So with Construct, everything is exported into a web app or it's used in what they call a wrapper, an HTML wrapper, which means that it's basically like a website. Technically, you can release for iOS, Android, Xbox, but if there's no web support, you cannot release for it. For example, the Apple TV does not support web. So some of you out there might say, hey, look, there's this one random project on GitHub that will let you run a website on the Apple TV. Well, that may be true, but Apple officially does not want web views on web TV, which means that your HTML5 game that you're exporting from Construct can't go on the Apple TV. Now, there's a few other instances of this, but the main issue with exporting for HTML5 is the support of the platform. Now, it should be as simple, and if you're from the future, check out this video on why everything should go to the web anyway, because I feel that things should be easier to export now. By going to the web and making web support virtually universal across all platforms, everything's gonna be a lot easier. But that's a story for another time. So back to Construct 3, you're at the mercy of the device's support for all of this web content. The only way to solve this is to have a bunch of native exporters, and the founders have been clear that they don't wanna do this, and with good reason. It would take so much time. They would rather make Construct 3 a better experience than work on a native exporter. Working on a native exporter would take a ton of different people and be very costly. However, it would be nice to have. Now, the other thing I would really like to make in Construct 3 with its engine is a 3D game. Now, I don't think that making a 3D game is on the roadmap for Construct and Skira. And if I'm gonna be perfectly honest, I would really like to do this. Problem is, is that going from 2D to 3D isn't just adding another dimension. There's a ton of different work that you have to do. Getting things to look good, getting things to work well, and getting the user experience and everything to go from the coding to the game is really challenging. That whole other dimension is really hard to do. Furthermore, if you've been using game engines for a long time, you'll know that the Unreal versus Unity, which engine looks better debate is always going on. And it's only been recently that Unity was able to catch up and arguably Unreal stuff looks amazing. So rendering and making things look good in the 3D space is really challenging. Construct could go a different road and instead of making things look hyper-realistic like Unity and Unreal are doing, they can make it look more like a cartoon. Now, if you're from the future, you'll check out this video on why 2D games are going extinct. But that's a story for another time. Now, I like you making 2D games because they're really easy to make, but 3D games offer so much more versatility. Also, the models being made for 3D are harder to do unless you're making voxel, but even then it can be quite challenging. So again, if you really wanna make a 3D game, Construct's not the engine for you. So in conclusion, Construct 3 is an amazing engine and you should try it out right now. Now, I've been using Construct 2 since 2011 and I love the engine so much. In fact, I love it so much that this review is long overdue. So if you like making games, then you should check it out right now. Simply go to editor.construct.net to try it out. If you want some amazing Construct 3 tutorials, you can check them out below. Mammoth Interactive has been the number one Construct game tutorial developer. In addition, you can check out some of the games that I've made in Construct 3. Hey everybody, thanks for listening. If you're like me and you like to keep your data private, and there's no better way to do that than with today's sponsor, NordVPN. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network, and if you want to browse anonymously, keep your location secret, and keep your data encrypted, this product is for you. As a bonus, if you ever get a message saying that a video is not available in your country, you can simply click a button and virtually teleport to any country you want. NordVPN is the best because they have thousands of servers worldwide and they're super fast. In addition, they have an Android and iOS app that helps you stay safe even on mobile devices. This comes free with your account. NordVPN lets you connect six devices with one subscription so you and your family are covered. If you want to get 75 off a three-year plan and get one month free, you can use the coupon code BURRA at checkout at, with the link below. Please use the coupon code BURRA so that NordVPN will know that I sent you. You can only get this amazing offer if you use the link below and the coupon code BURRA. With NordVPN, you can rest assured that your privacy is taken care of. Also, be sure to like and subscribe, and if you want me to cover a topic in technology, just put it down below.
Lastly, if you like some of our products at Mammoth Interactive, you can check them out below. There's a ton of different products that we have and every bit of money that you give us goes into making new content. Thanks for listening and I'll see you in another video.